Okay, Jill. All right. If you want to pull up your screen, make sure we're good on that end. Perfect. Ladies, I welcome you to today's Empower Hour workshop um, featuring one of my favorite community partners, New Directions Career Center. Um, definitely just poured so much into me um, that allowed me to make beautiful changes in my life. Um, so I hope you will stay with us for the full hour and reach out to New Directions following um, today's workshop. Leading today's workshop, we have Jamie Phillips, Kat Yamaguchi, and Jill Hammonds. And I will pass the floor over to Jill. Thank you ladies so much for coming out today. Hi, thank you for having us, um, Bridget. It's a pleasure to share this information with everyone that is watching today. Um, Bridget will be uh, our moderator today. So if you have questions, feel free to ask those. And Jamie and I are happy to answer them as we go through the presentation. So don't feel like you have to wait till the end. And I am actually going to turn it over to Jamie. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today. I am Jamie Phillips with New Directions Career Center. I work as the employment consultant and classroom instructor. Um, I'll turn it back over to Jill so she can introduce herself real quick and then we'll get going. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. I'm Jill okay. Hammonds and I'm a career counselor here at New Directions Career Center and also a facilitator. Okay. And Kat, if you're there, um, do you want to introduce? I am. I am also eating, so I can my camera so no one to see me too. Um, yeah, I'm program director for New Directions Career Center. We're delighted uh, to meet you all and to share some information with you today and hope we can continue to be a resource and connect with you in the future. Okay, thanks so much. So today um, we are going to talk about resumes. We are going to cover um, the purpose of the resume, some do's and don'ts um, that should be and should not be on your resume, different elements and types of resumes, some strategies to help you get that resume in front of the hiring authorities. And then we will um, certainly save time at the end um, for question answers. And as Jill said, we'll try to um, stop every now and again during the presentation to see if people have questions just so it doesn't slip your mind. So. Um, I will start by asking, and you can just do a show of hands or um, you can put it in chat. Um, how many of you already have a resume right now? Okay. Update, don't be shameful about it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, that's why we're here today. So um, first of all, as the introduction to resumes, resume writing is a lot like fashion. It goes through trends. Um, what is in today will certainly be out tomorrow. Um, and everyone that you talk to about your resume or seek advice from is going to have a different opinion or their two cents. So what we want to sh you to walk away with today is that we wanna share the classics of what should be on that resume. Um, the strategies that work in the majority of situations um, and some trends that we hear or that we see. Um, your goal is to determine what suits you best um, and what is going to be the best representation of you on that resume to potential employers. So there are a few rules um, that we will go over. Keep in mind that resumes don't get you the job, they get you the interview. That's the goal of the resume, is to get them to talk to you and invite you in for an interview. Your resume is one tool that you need to market yourself. You should expect to have more than one resume. Resumes work very best when they are tailored to the targeted job that you are applying for. So if you are applying for several different types of jobs, you're gonna to need to have different versions of your resume for everything that you apply to. So you may say to yourself, wow, that sounds like a lot of work. 
Um, and it is initially, but if you can come up with one main working document or copy of your resume with as much information about you that highlights your, your skills and your expertise, when you go to apply for different jobs, it will be easy to pick and choose which pieces and parts of that resume you want to include for the particular job that you're applying for. So you will customize it um, for every job that you apply for. It is worth the rep. It is worth the effort though to put this time into it initially because it will become much easier as time goes on and you apply for different jobs. These employers will recognize that you have taken the time to look at their job posting and to make sure that that important information is on that resume. They can tell if someone has simply just uploaded a resume without taking the time to customize it. So the extra time and effort that you put into it will pay off for you in the long run. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Jill to kind of talk about what the purpose is. All right, so we're gonna talk about what the purpose is of a resume for both the job seeker as well as for the employer. And so first of all, for the job seeker, the resume is a marketing tool. So it's your first impression. It's what gets you the interview. It's an advertisement of your best accomplishments and qualifications. It's also a summary tool. So your resume is a concise description of your most relevant experience towards a particular job. And as Jamie mentioned, you're gonna to want to tailor that resume to the specific job that you're applying for. As it's also a networking tool. Your resume is information that you can share with people that you know regarding what type of work you're looking for and why you are a good fit for that job. So I always recommend, and you might hear me say it again later, but I always recommend that you keep a clean, wrinkle-free copy of your resume with you because you never know when you might need it. Now for employers, the resume serves as a screening tool. So your resume is a way in which employers narrow down the pool of candidates that they plan to interview. And we'll share tips today on how to make your resume stand out from the rest. It is also, just as it is for job seekers, for employers, it's also a summary tool. Um, your resume, again, is a concise description of your work history that will prepare the employer for the interview. So just as you are preparing for the interview, so is the employer. And finally, for the employer, it's a sample of your work. Your resume is a way for employers to see your attention to detail, your understanding of the job, and your ability to communicate which is another reason it's so important to take the time to thoroughly look through it, make sure there's no errors and make sure it's communicating what you want it to. Sorry, I have a little interruption. So hold on one moment. I will um, take this opportunity to see if anybody has any questions so far of what we've talked about. And if you want to put those in chat, um, you're welcome to do so. So sorry for that interruption. Um, hopefully, I'm not the only one that has young ones doing school from home right now. Uh, so sometimes we have uh, spontaneous uh, children and, and sometimes pets that uh, interrupt. And so um, let me... Um, move on to the next screen. And that's where we're gonna talk about the do's of resume writing. Um, so uh, one of the first do's is to write your own resume. And um, I know resume writing can seem daunting and maybe even scary, but you can do this. It takes time and effort, but it's worth it when you land the interview for the job that you really want. And as a reminder, we here at New Directions Career Center are happy to help you with writing your resume. Another do in resumes is to make it concise and honest. So employers are often reviewing many resumes and they don't have the time to read multiple pages and lots of words. So it's really important to keep your resume to one to two pages maximum and to use bullet points to display your skills and abilities. And be honest, this is a must. If you're truly not the right fit match for the job, it will become quite evident once you get the job and it may not work out. So be honest. 
Next, be direct and use specific language. So don't use too many words. You wanna use clear statements. So I like to start with bullet points and then with a verb. And so here's a couple examples. Facilitated weekly support groups for caregivers, period. So very specific and concise and to the point. Or assembled furniture with accuracy. So again, being direct and specific. The next is that you want to quantify. You want to quantify results whenever possible. So for example, if you supervised 15 employees, then you want to state that. Or if you maintained a 98% productivity rate, then make sure you state that on your resume as well. Next, um, target or customize. And so I think that Jamie and I have already said this, but it's going to be really important that you target your resume specifically for the job that you're applying for. So you want to use the job description and pull out the verbs, the tasks, and the activities from it and use those same words to describe an activity or task that you perform or have performed at your previous employment. And then next, proofread. And I don't know if anyone caught that misspelling um, in the previous uh, one, but um, it's so important to proofread. Um, make sure you use spell check and double check for typos, spelling errors, and incorrect spacing. Employers look at this as a sign of your attention to detail. So I would encourage you to have a friend or a family member or one of us at New Directions to take a look at your resume as well. And finally, seek assistance. There are so many resources out there right now for resume writing. Uh, there's YouTube videos on it, there's books, there's websites. There is a lot of resources out there to help you. You are not alone. And for the third time, we at New Directions are happy to help you as well. So you're not alone in this. I'll let Jamie talk about the don'ts. Okay, so now we know what we should put on there. Now we're going to highlight what we want to make sure we don't include. Um, the first one is um, that we do not want to include um, salary on there. Um, you don't want to have that on your resume because you don't want that to be something that rules you in or out. Um, that's something that can be discussed further in the interview, but you certainly would not want to put um, the salary range on your resume. Jill, do you want to just clear? Yeah, that's Sorry. okay. Um, the next one um, is references. Um, some of you may still do it or have done it in the past, but oftentimes the last line on that resume that you'll see is references available upon request. Or I've even seen some resumes where people actually put their references and their contact information. That's something that does not need to be on the resume itself. That would be something that you would list as a separate document or a separate page that you could share with that employer should they ask you for references. We're going to assume that you have references. So that's one of those things we, we mentioned earlier that some resumes, some things come and go out of style, if you will. And that's just a line that you can eliminate from your resume these days. Um, if you think about it, when you do an online application, they typically ask you for references at that point. Um, and again, if you have additional references that you're using, you would include those on a separate sheet or a separate document to be able to share with that employer. Personal information. Um, this can cover a few things. One, you would never want to put your date of birth on there, um, your, the year that you high, graduated from high school, because we don't, again, want to give employers too much personal information that could exclude us from consideration, right? So most of us graduate from high school at the about the same age, right? Um, they can do the math. We don't want them to do that. College year might be different because not everybody you know, goes to college right after high school. Um, the other personal information that you do not any longer need to include is your physical address on your resume. So the only information that should be in that top heading um, besides your name is your phone number, your cell phone number, or and your 
email address. And if you have a presence on LinkedIn, then you would want your LinkedIn address on there as well. Um, you don't need that physical address for a few reasons. One is um, we rarely send information in the mail anymore, which was part of the reason why you would have that. Um, two, if an employer sees where you live and maybe their location is far away, you don't want them to question, would you be willing to drive that far, right? Um, so again, you want to remove anything that could potentially be a red flag for you. And finally, for safety reasons, um, if you are posting your resume or uploading it to different sites, um, it's out there in cyberspace for all to see. Um, so you don't want to make everybody in in the world, if you will, um, aware of where you physically live. So take that off of there, no need to include it. Your physical address will be asked for usually on a job application. Um, and that's that's all the only place that that really needs to be. So again, personal information can be off of there. Next would be anything um, irrelevant, any any information that does not pertain to the job at hand, um, you would not want to include. So for instance, let's say that you had been certified at some point um, as a medical assistant and you haven't done that in a long time, your certification is no longer current and you don't want to do that anymore, I would leave that information off the resume because again, it doesn't pertain to the job that you are applying for. Again, you don't wanna cause any question in that employer's mind. So any irrelevant information should be off of there. Abbreviations, slang, contractions. Um, you want to use good grammar throughout your entire resume. So um, for example, you would not use can't. You would spell out cannot. Um, just kind of a good rule of thumb to follow. Um, slang, anything that again isn't proper English. Um, abbreviations, let's say that you have um, some type of certification or some type of skill set that you typically abbreviate. For instance, if you are a licensed practicing nurse, an LPN, the first time you mention that, that term, you would spell out licensed practical nurse, and then in parentheses, you can put LPN. After you've spelled it out once, then you can use those abbreviations, but you don't want to risk that employer not knowing what that means and set that resume aside because they don't know what it is. So spell everything out at least the first time you mention it. Um, next, anything um, personal pronouns. So you would not use a term that goes something like, I was responsible for, dot, dot, dot. Um, you would take those personal pronouns off of there and just simply state responsible for, handled, whatever the case may be. You want to use action-oriented um, or accomplishment-based statements, but you want to leave things like I, me, or my off your resume. And then finally, um, you don't want to overwhelm, um, so you don't want to give too much information on that resume. If you put it all out there, why on earth would they want to talk to you? So you want this resume to serve as an advertisement for your skills and your abilities to get them to get them on the hook so that they want to call you and find out more. Um, with that too, I will say as far as number of pages, Resumes um, should be no more than two pages. If you can get everything on one page, great. If it needs to go to two pages, that's perfectly fine and acceptable, but you don't want any more than two pages. I will also say this, if you go to that second page, you wanna make sure you pretty much fill up that second page. You don't want too much white space. So you have to kind of find that sweet spot of how much information you want to include that you feel is relevant um, without giving too much or making them work too hard to find the information that they're looking for. Any questions so far on any of the do's or the don'ts that anybody has?
Good question, Don. How far back should you go? Thank you for bringing that up. Um, the rule of thumb right now is that you should go back no more than 10 years. Um, that's kind of the rule of thumb that uh, we've all been just teaching about and that from the research that I've read. I read something not long ago that said um, five years, which I, I think that's a little too slim of a window. Um, now, I will say if you have experience further back from 10 years, or let's say that you took a break between employment, right? Um, and you have a gap in employment because maybe you stayed home to raise children or, or whatever the case may be, you can include on your resume a section that says something like additional work experience. You can still list that experience. You just don't necessarily have to put the dates in there. Again, because we don't want those employers to do the math and rule us in or out because of how old they think we are or how old that experience may be, right? So in my personal experience, I started out my career and worked for 15 years as a recruiter. I took almost a 10 year break between jobs when I was home with my daughter. So if I were to apply for a job again where I felt those skills would be relevant, I would certainly list that experience. I worked for a national search firm. It was well known not only here in Columbus, but across the country. Um, and I was there for a long time. So I don't want necessarily someone to see how long ago that was, but I want them to see the skills and my accomplishments from that. So I would have a section that said additional work experience. I would list my employer, my title, and a few of my biggest accomplishments there. Um, again, if they want to know more, hopefully they're gonna call me and talk to me about that, right? But again, I want this resume to get my foot in that door. So again, no more than 10 years. Hopefully that answers that question for you, Don. Anybody else? Okay, Joe, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, well, now we're gonna talk about two main types of resumes. So we typically have a chronological resume and then a functional resume. So the chronological resume is gonna focus on your work experience and it's gonna list it from the most recent to the least recent. And this, this format is generally gonna be best for those who have a consistent work history. And it's also useful in highlighting your increase in job levels over time, if that's accurate for you. So for example, if you were someone that started off as a bank teller and you eventually moved into sales and then got promoted to management, then that progression is gonna be clearly displayed in a chronological format. Now, a functional resume, on the other hand, is best used for those who are changing careers, have a gap in their work history, or their work is not directly related to the job that he or she is applying to. So a functional resume focuses on your skills and experience rather than the work history. Um, and so let's go ahead and I'm going to show you the next screen. We have an example of a chronological resume. And let's just take a look at some of the parts of that resume. So there's a few things that you should always include on your resume. And then there's other things that are optional, depending on your goal, your experience, and how you want to promote yourself. So obviously at the very top, you're gonna to see that your name is of course most important along with your contact information, your email. And then the LinkedIn is optional. If you have a professional, excuse me, a professional LinkedIn page and you wanna include that web link there, then that's a really great idea. But again, it's optional. You don't have to include that. All right, and then the next section is a summary of qualifications. So this is typically a maximum four line paragraph that includes your years of experience in the field that you're applying for. It also includes qualifications and traits about yourself that cover the main required qualifications from the job posting, as well as describe what will set you apart from other candidates that have the same qualifications. So here's an example. Skilled with 15 years of excellent experience in customer service, communication, and interpersonal skills. Highly adept at assisting customers with their financial needs. Utilize strong problem-solving skills with a keen eye for detail. And so then you'll see in this next section is an area for you to write um, some of those 
key skill areas that you that you have that you also can relate back to the job description. So you're going to look at that job description and look at what the skill set is that they're looking for. And any of those that you have and that you feel confident about, you want to put those right here in the skill section. And then as you'll see next is what follows is the work history. And you're going to start with the job title, the um, most recent or current job with those dates. And then you're going to write, again, those bullet points of those accomplishment statements that you have had from that current or most recent job. And again, just like we talked about, you want to be quantifying things that you accomplished. You want to make them to the point, concise, um, start with the verb. And so um, you want to put those in this section right here. And then um, you'll move down from the most recent job and you'll move down to the least recent. And again, remembering that you want to stay within that 10 years period of time. And then finally, at the end, you would list your education and um, whether that be a high school diploma or um, whatever your highest level of education might be, that is what you're going to list there. So if you have an associate's degree or you have a bachelor's degree, you wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't need to add on there your high school diploma as well. You're just going to list your highest level of education. Jill, may I ask a question? Yeah. In the work history area, how many bullet points, going back to what you um, said about TMI, you are Jamie, um, mm -hmm. how many bullet points would you recommend? You know, I really typically recommend anywhere between three to five um, bullet points under each job title. I see that we have- There's another question yeah. in the chat. Um, what if you have significant work experience for a long period, uh -oh, for a long period of time, and then you take a break and then go back to a job that is not significant to the position um, that you're applying to? Should you leave out the insignificant position? And Dawn says, I have a degree, but I have gone back to take a few classes to refer Fresh my skills. Um, do I list those additional courses? Um, so there, there are two questions there. Um, All right. So I'm just looking over that first question again. So I think that depends on how long ago that significant job was, but I think you're going to most likely, I would say include both because you want to show the employer that you are working. And so this may be a case where you would use the um, functional resume um, to highlight your skills and put that at the forefront of your resume, which we'll show you in a moment. Um, and that may be the best way to highlight your abilities for applying for that position. So hopefully that will answer as we talk more about the functional resume. And Jamie, do you want did you want to add anything to that? No, I, I was just gonna say I'll I'll give a little more information on that in just a second. Um, the question about the education, um, I would list the the degree that you have. Um, but then I think you can also list um, maybe, a, so I'll just be very generic. Let's say that your degree is from ABC College. Um, you would list that college and in your degree, again, don't, you don't necessarily, especially if it was a while ago, need to put the dates on that. But you could also list um, the institution that you have taken some refresher courses to let that employer know that you have those updated skill set and that knowledge too. So I think it's okay to list and just put um, coursework in, you know, whatever. Again, don't need to explain it too much because hopefully they're going to want to invite you to an interview in which you can explain it at that point. Would you recommend um, highlighting 
those additional courses maybe on your LinkedIn profile? Yep, that's a great place to put it. Um, and the other place that you could highlight it, as Jill um, shared a little bit ago, that skills section that's at the top of the resume. If you feel that those classes um, are relevant to the job that you are um, going for, then you could list maybe the, the, the skills or the, the coursework up there as well. Any other questions about this? All right, then I'm going to turn it over to Jamie to talk about the functional resume format. So this is the second format um, that we talked about. Again, with the functional resume, um, some things are going to be the same. Obviously, your contact information is still going to be there. Um, your introduction or your summary of qualifications is still in the same place, as are your skills. Here's where the difference is. Um, in that case where maybe your work experience is older, right, or not as recent as some other skills, but you're trying to get back into that field, you want to highlight that you have the skills that match the job at hand, right? So you're going to pick maybe three of the top skill areas that you want that employer to see that you have. So let's say that you are applying for um, a front desk position, just to be very uh, make things easy. One skill set might be um, administration, right? Because you have to have a good amount of administrative skills to, to work in that capacity. So the next skill set might be customer service, because again, you're at that front desk position and you are the face of the company and in, in creating that positive first impression. And then finally, maybe the other skill area that you have um, Maybe you're also in charge of handling all purchasing of office supplies and equipment and that kind of stuff. So maybe that skill set might be purchasing. Um, so whatever the skill sets are, you want to pick the, the main ones that you're seeing are being asked for in that job. Under those bullet points then are going to be those uh, accomplishments that you had under those particular skill sets regardless of when you did that, right? So if, if you haven't worked in that capacity in maybe 10 years, doesn't matter. Those skills are still your skills, right? So you would list those bullet points under each skill set. At the bottom, you still need to include your work history because you don't want that employer saying, wow, this is great, but where did they do it and when did they do it, right? So you're still going to highlight that. You're still going to list it, but it's not going to be the first thing that they see, right? We're going to rope them in. <laughs> We're going to get their attention by looking at the skills first, and then they'll see at the bottom, oh, I see that, you know, she worked at ABC Company from this time that's kind of like the afterthought. So you still need to include that on there, but it's not going to be the first thing that they see. Um, so the functional resume, again, could be beneficial if you have those gaps, right? The other thing, the other time that you might use a functional resume is I get people who maybe have done the same job their entire career, right? They've been a uh, an administrative assistant their entire career. They've been a teacher their entire career. They've been a medical assistant, right? And so it would seem redundant to list the same um, sets of accomplishments under each position. So again, this might be the benefit of breaking down those skill sets and then the employer is gonna see, oh, I see that she worked as a blank her entire career. These are just the different places that she did that. Right. It also comes in handy if you've done um, maybe a lot of contract work or temporary work and your duties and responsibilities were essentially the same. You just did it at different places again so that you're not repeating the same thing three different times. You're highlighting those skills and then letting them know where you did that. Does that kind of explain the difference or why you would choose functional over chronological? Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, good. And, and I do have clients um, that I work with um, that maybe have a version of each, right? They're, they're not sure which one feels best or, or is going to get me the biggest bang for my buck. So um, you may try a version of each and see which one is getting the biggest hits, right? And then you'll know from there. Um, there are subtle differences, but again, purpose is why you would use one over another in, in, in many cases. Jerry, did you have an additional question? Yeah, I was trying to type it in, but I was going too slow. Oh. Um, <laughs> you could just uh, ask it. <laughs> the question was uh, for the functional resume. Um, so you're going to list these down there at the bottom. So um, if there are a lot of employers, but it's been over a multitude of years, you know, how will that employer know that you're not a person that job hops versus a person who you know, has been at, has worked several places for a long, longer periods of time. Can you give me an example? Well, for instance, okay, you're saying down here to the bottom of this functional resume, you would list all the, after you, you wrote them in and told them all your experience. Yep. So now say I've worked at ABC company for 15 years. Yep. I worked at John Doe company for 20 years. Yep. I worked at, um, Meyer for three years. I've worked somewhere else for five years. So say, say maybe I've got, well, I don't want to make too many years. I'm make, maybe like I'm a hundred years old, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know so what there's saying. a lot of, lot of years involved for each uh, employer. So maybe for the average person, um, I don't know whether the functional resume looks better for a person who, um, it's the what is your, you versus a person who's younger. I yeah. guess that's what my concern is. Yeah, that might be maybe better answered like in an individual, like either with Jill or I, you know, directly where we could look at what your background is. And we are certainly happy to do that with you. But um, when was your last job, Jerry, that you had? Last job was, I, I, I ended in October of last year. Okay, so I would list that first, right, to show them that relevance. And then what, what came before that? Before that, um, I had a job that I worked up until 2017. Okay, and how long was that for? About three years, three and a half okay. years. So I would include that. And then what, what's before that? Is that where you get into some of the longer term well, before that, um, there was a gap, and then there was a one year, I think about a year, year and a half. And then before that, um, there might have been a two year job. And then before that, there was a 15 or 16 year old, 15 or 16 year old. Okay. Then, so that could also be a situation where maybe we do almost a hybrid version of chronological and functional, where maybe you include that additional work experience in there where you list where you were for 15 or 16 years, but not necessarily the dates, right? So that they can see that, oh, I see that she worked for ABC company in this capacity. Um, and then you can explain when you did that, hopefully once you get that interview. Okay, okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, any other questions? Let's, we'll move on and you can always ask questions still as we go. Okay, so the next thing that we wanted to highlight is what applicant tracking systems or ATS stands for. I don't know if this is um, a term that any of you are familiar with, but these systems rank their uh, electronic, their computer, you know, programs that employers purchase to help them rank resumes according to how relevant and or recent your skills and experiences are, right? So what this means is with the advances in technology and the growth within businesses, employers rely on these computerized systems to manage their hiring process. Not all employers, but a lot of employers are using this. 
And so what that means is that many times a computer is reading your resume before a human being reads your resume. So why do we mention this? Because you want to kind of try to beat the system if you can, or try to get it into this that one if we know that a computer is going to read your resume we want it to have everything in it or as much in it as possible to move that resume to the top of the electronic pile if you will um, so that it has a greater chance of getting read by a human being so with that um, these employers can input they want to see certain keywords from the job description, you know, X percentage of keywords need to show up on your resume, right? Or they could even say, we want, you know, experience no further back. Again, I'm not a technical guru, so I can't tell you how all these, um, how these were designed, but the employers can input information that they want and have it set up so that it will weed through all the resumes that come in for particular positions and only give them the top so many, if you will. So um, why do we say this? Because we talked before about the importance of customizing your resume. You want to make sure that when you are creating your resume to match that job that you incorporate as much of their verbiage and language into that resume as you can that appears on that job posting. So um, if there isn't a whole lot of information on those job postings, which is sometimes the case, and you happen to know who the company is, then I might go directly to that company's website to see if I could get some other um, information, other terminology. I might go to LinkedIn if I know who the company is and see if I can't find on LinkedIn people maybe who are doing that same job, right, that I'm applying for and I can read their profiles and see what kind of terminology they have on their profiles. Um, but you want to use as many keywords as you can um, to get that resume to the top of the pile. So your resume is going to score higher if it contains the matching keywords and phrases from the job posting matching skills and qualifications that appear in the most recent work history. Again, this functional resume format may help you get that if the skills show up first, right? Um, um, work histories to the top of the pile. So your resume is going to score higher if it Okay, not sure what happened there. <laughs> um, the most recent relevant information, obviously, and that these keywords appear frequently. So the next slide is going to show you a little exercise if you want to make sure that you are getting as much information on that resume as you can. Um, this is kind of an exercise that I will do with clients as we are working on updating their resume. Um, I will take the job posting and we will color code it, if you will, and look at what are those um, action words, right? And I'm going to go back to my resume and I'm going to compare it to what's on that job description. So I see here that they're looking to for someone who can provide professional administrative support, provide customer service, maintain calendars, research, obtain create. I see that these are action words. I want to make sure that on my resume, they see that I have maintained something, that I have researched or obtained or provided. Again, I want to make sure I'm using their words on my resume. The aqua color highlights are, um, you know, things. So professional administrative support, customer service, senior level manager that you supported, uh, materials and goods. These are things that you may have done, travel requests. Um, so do a little exercise if you're struggling with what to include and see what you see highlighted, see what comes out highlighted and repeated. Again, if these key words are not clear on the job posting, you can go to the website, you can go to LinkedIn. Um, if you happen to know people who do this job or work for that company, I would pick their brains as well. 
Um, so look for also names if, if they have specific certifications that they're looking for, licensure, degrees, um, job titles, Product names, essential technology or software equipment, industry jargon or buzzwords. And again, if you called it one thing where you were, I would tend to use their wording versus what I called it before, just again, to raise that resume up. Um, any descriptors that you see, um, you know, if, if they're looking for someone who is um, working with youth, um, I would include that. The other thing to keep in mind, you want to highlight is keep these things in mind. Look at what is required. Look at what is preferred or desired. And finally, what is repeated. So if it is required that you have a degree in business and you don't, chances are pretty good that resume is not going to get past that first screening, right? Because they have put that in as a requirement. Now, if it's a degree is simply preferred and you don't have that degree, but you have great experience to back that up, then I would still apply and I would still move forward with that. Because again, that's a preference. They would like it, but it's not something that's going to knock you out. Um, if you don't have it. I saw a quick question there. About the Microsoft Office Suite. Um, let's see what that was. I previously put this on my resume, but I now use Microsoft 3. Yes, put down whatever your most recent um, software skills are that you have. Now, if you also have something that they're using, I would make sure that's listed as well. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay. Any questions on that applicant tracking system? I know um, it was a lot of information, but again, the takeaway from that is that you wanna make sure that you incorporate as much of their information onto your resume as you can. Okay. All right, so let's talk about self-marketing strategies. So the first key, so let's remember that your resume is often part of your first impression with an employer. And so therefore using effective self-marketing strategies to develop your resume is important. And so there's five essential components of self-marketing that we're gonna talk about briefly. And the first one is to know your professional audience. So it's obviously the employer behind the job that you're applying for. So like Jamie mentioned earlier, you wanna research that company, learn their mission and values. Know who you're speaking to and gear your resume to that audience. So if you can use words from their mission statement and their value statement into your resume or into your cover letter, that's going to score points. And that's going to um, be noticed by the employers reviewing your resume. So you want to make sure you use that language. Discovery and understanding of needs. The job description is telling you what the employer needs. So let their needs guide the verbiage that you use in your resume. You want to tell them in the cover letter and you want to tell them in the resume how you're the person to meet the needs of their agency. Promote your ability to meet their, their needs. So again, and we may sound like a broken record, but it's so key is you wanna use keywords from the job description to communicate to the employer how you're the best candidate to meet the needs based on what you've done with previous employers. And again, we talked about it earlier, but it's important to use consistent, clear message. So your resume has an overall theme that speaks to the job description the needs of the employer, and its message matches what's in your job application, as well as what you say in your future interview, and what's on your online presence. So you want the, your, your overall theme to match um, in any area that the employer is going to see. So if you include your LinkedIn um, website, then you want the theme to match in your LinkedIn page. And finally, adjust your message as needed. So you're going to adjust your message with new information. So this means customizing it to each position you apply for. And that 
it doesn't mean an overall of the whole resume. That doesn't mean you have to redo the whole entire resume for each job, but it does mean that you need to go through it and look at those keywords like Jamie talked about, and you want to tweak it and make sure that you're including those, the verbiage that they use and the keywords that they use and use those to match them with how you write your bullet points in your resume. Again, with this to be explaining how you're the best candidate to meet the unique needs of that employer. Any questions about that? Okay. All right. So I know it was a lot of information that we um, shared with you today, um, but we did obviously cover the purpose, why we do it, some do's and don'ts, the different elements and types, <laughs> the strategies as far as that applicant tracking system goes. Um, we'll save a few minutes for obviously what your takeaways are and what question, additional questions um, any of you might have at this point in time. So you can either do it through chat or you can unmute yourself and, and ask away. What are your thoughts on columns versus a straight, a straight format? So there are a lot of different formatting that I've seen over my time and that I know people use. I think columns look really sharp um, and can help clarify information. Here's the problem that can happen with that. Um, a lot of times all technology is not created equal. So what could happen is if you go to upload that resume with some columns in it or other graphics or unique things on there, um, you can't guarantee it's going to come out in the same format, depending on what that software is that that employer has, right? So the risk you take with that is that it could come when they open up your resume it could open up very jumbled and not the way that you intended it to look so my advice usually is when i see those great looking resumes this is awesome don't use this to upload but take it with you when you get the in-person interview it's perfectly fine to take a hard copy of that resume in to show that employer um, but you don't want to run the risk that when they open it they're not going to be able to read it the way you intend them to to read that um, i see it sometimes when people put graphics on there um, again those columns um, different different stuff. Jill, any other advice on that that you might have? I mean, I, I just agree. I would say that um, the resume you upload is not the resume that you're going to use when you want to be super creative. So you don't want to add a lot of color, a lot of lines. Um, you want to be pretty, um, just um, stick with the basics when it comes to that resume. Um, not a lot of extra formatting, like Jamie said. Um, and then, you know, your opportunity, because for some jobs, a creative resume and an artsy resume is ideal. And that's the resume you would use when you are handing it to the employer. So okay. I'm just wondering. And you could you. put that creative resume on your LinkedIn page for mm -hmm. them to view, certainly, right? Because the chances of that opening right are, are greater than you uploading it into their system where we don't know what their technology is. Um, at the end of today's session, you're going to get an email after this um, with those two versions, the functional and the chronological, um, we're going to send you some templates that you can use. You can simply populate those. And those templates seem to um, be what works for most employers when people upload them. Um, they're kind of generic, especially if you have a creative background um, or you're real tech savvy. Um, but for the purposes of uploading that initial resume, they seem to work well. So we're going to make sure that you get those templates so that you have them at the ready. Mm -hmm. 
If there's no other questions, we do want to make you aware of some other upcoming trainings that we're offering, and you can register for those through our New Directions CC, uh, org, uh, website. And so you can see in February, we will be talking about communicating your strengths and skills. We'll offer a self-compassion course on how to know your body signals and how to take care of your body. And then also we will have a meet the resource uh, event where we will be meeting with OSU Community Health Worker Program. So we would love to see you all again and invite you to um, join us for any of those or all of them. And then um, finally, um, so those of you who are familiar with New Directions know that in the past we've offered different types of programming. Um, since COVID, we've had to shift um, quite a bit. So we've moved everything to a virtual platform. We did a redesign of our traditional 10 day course um, and it is now called our YES Career Program. It is designed by women for women. Um, it is a short term small group career course um, in a very supportive environment. You get both Jill and I and our other great counselor, Deborah, as well as Kat um, on a regular basis. Um, our classes meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1.30 in the afternoon till 4 p.m. Um, and they start, we have a class starting this coming Tuesday, January 26th, which will run through March the 4th. Um, these are delivered to you virtually through Zoom. Um, you also get emails ahead of time with any prep work um, that will help make those class sessions more effective. Um, so we do still have seats available, if you will. If you are interested in joining us for this program starting next week, please call us or email us and we will give you more information and hopefully get you signed up to join us. So um, we, we had a great first go round with this at the end of last year and we're really looking forward to doing it um, here in 2021, so. And then finally, we just wanna remind you that we offer a lot of individualized services for individuals that live in Franklin County and the contiguous surrounding counties. And you can see what some of those are listed here. So again, obviously helping with resume reviews. We can help link you with community resources. We have a lot of career assessments and inventories that we can help you take. And we can help you with exploring um, career options, with doing informational interviews, uh, reviewing your LinkedIn page, helping you prepare for that job interview that you have coming up and helping you seek employment. And uh, we also have a mediator on site that can help with uh, legal and benefit assistance as well for Franklin County residents. So again, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Our number is listed here on this, on this page or send us an email and we will be in contact with you right away. And again, we thank you for allowing us to share with you today. Beyond grateful for your presence today and the beautiful content delivered. Ladies, I definitely, again, encourage you to reach out to New Directions. Um, of course, so many resources offered through New Direction. Whichever way you want to go, you will be in perfect, perfectly good hands um, at New Directions. Oh, somebody just popped in the room. Welcome, Melissa. Um, we're wrapping though. Are there any questions, ladies? A lot of thank yous in the chat. It was great being with you all today on this Friday. And again, we welcome you to um, reach out to us so that we can help you on an individual basis if you need us. Hey, thank you. I, I, great information. Thank you. Yes, she ladies should. Um, and I'll follow up with their email addresses. Um, and I was going to say send it to me, but no, I'll just send the email addresses to you ladies. And then um, you can get, we'll get them out from there. Information for new directions. Yep. Out to the ladies. That'd Great. Be perfect. Thank you. Happy Friday, everyone. Enjoy the weekend. Yeah, same here. Thank you. Please do have a beautiful weekend, ladies. Thank you, New Direction, so much for your time and expertise. And ladies, thank you um, for um, owning your own development and participating in today's workshop. Everyone have a beautiful weekend. Okay, you too.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.